GDP will continue to shrink until I can actually buy egg noodles in the store. <laughs> so, is it the eggs or the is it the flour? What is keeping people from building this right now, from manufacturing food? It could be the fact that nobody wants to go into the factory to make it, too. But if you got chickens, right? Like, they just keep dropping eggs. Yeah, that's true. Nobody would turn on the machine. I, I got to get some chickens. I'm going to... William Sonoma had one of those, like, high-class agrarian chicken coops. <laughs> where... It costs like eight thousand dollars, so you can put like four chickens in your backyard. Jeez, dude, your chickens would not survive on your property. It's a, a fox or something was gonna get to them. And it's always <laughs> if, if I gotta run outside at night, I, I'm gonna I grab a pistol with me because like you don't know what's out there. There's foxes, there's coyotes howling everywhere. You probably get attacked by a you know rabbit pack of raccoons. Oh man, your chickens would last a week. <laughs> Maybe out there salivating right now. <laughs> Fresh meat. But like, how do we how do we meet GDP expectations or, or grow GDP if we can't manufacture things to sell to increase a GDP? I mean, I'm sure we're all waiting on something or trying to buy something where it's like, oh, that'll be in stock three months from now. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I agree. I, I think uh, we've talked about a recurring theme. We've talked about this a lot, but like, I, you don't see many areas of the economy where we're setting policy or we're doing something to actually fix the underlying issue. We have so many underlying issues right now that are causing, or at least catalysts to the to to shrinking GDP that it's it's hard to see it uh, rebounding. Now, economists are saying though that. They're actually expecting this to just be a blip, but I think back to like the transitory comment on inflation, and we're going to go back to growth in Q2. But I don't know how they how how we can justify that. I started piecing together audio clips last year for a song that was making fun of like the Fed, and I took a little pieces of all the news, and it goes like it's transitory, it's transitory, it's going to be short term, <laughs> transitory, transitory, and I it got to the point that where it's. They had so many of these sound bites. I was like, God damn, were you people wrong? And if you're wrong, we don't know anything, do we? And it's like, I'm not going nine months, eight, nine months now waiting on my truck. And Ford still can't tell me when that thing's going to get built. So I feel like this isn't getting better anytime soon. And if you can't build durable goods, how do you meet GDP expectations? I'm waiting on a generator. I'm waiting on a truck. I waited five months for a piece of audio equipment for the studio. It's every time you look around, it's got a semiconductor in it, or if it's some kind of like complex, durable good, you know, all the stuff you don't want to buy is in stock, but everything you want to buy is not. So there's a lot of pent up demand, but I, how do you, how do you have any GDP if we can't manufacture things, for example? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I just think it's a, uh, you know, a perfect storm. Lack of people in the industry, on top of recovering from the pandemic, on top of logistical issues. Yeah, I, I don't know who was telling me this, but you know, for like chicken, for example, we have the chickens here, but we we ship them out to China to clean them, and then they come back, and it's like. I don't know if that's entirely true, but if it is, it just sounds crazy to me. I feel like somebody on BattleBots could probably create some kind of machine to do that for us. <laughs> BattleBots. <laughs> Without having to ship the chicken to <laughs> China. Like, you can come up with these crassy devices. We can't find some uh, you know, robot to clean the chickens, right? Like that old, um... Yesterday on the news, it was like, uh, cooking oil shortage coming soon. <laughs> it's like, what is it, uh, you know, becoming a shortage issue? That's that's why it's like it, this whole, it's transitory, it's going to get better, it's going to get better. Isn't that what the government always tells you? Remember, like, stay home for three weeks and it's like, yeah, man, it's been 18 months. What's going, what's going on? Can I get an update? Can I get an update? We, we don't know when it's going to get fixed. 
you know, what are 30 year mortgages right now? We just had this discussion with somebody last night, probably low fives, five, two, five, five. If you got good credit, you know, they're going to hit you. The craziness is there's people out there. I saw like the big news channels thinking it's only going to be 25 point raises. And I'm like, if you don't think they're going to hit us with 50 bips or 75 bips at some point, you're out of your mind. You're going to see, you know, mortgage rates go up six, seven percent, maybe more. Well, what do you think it's going to do? Your credit cards go up, your car loans go up. We're going to buy less stuff. So wouldn't GDP go backwards? I don't, I don't know. I just, maybe I'm a little bit off today. No, I, I think, sorry, go ahead, Dennis. No, it's okay. The, like, these conversations are good, at least for my my psyche, because if, if I spend a few, more than, like, a couple minutes on Twitter or something, like, I can, I'll always be able to justify a bull case for why all this stuff is going to be fine. Like, I read this morning that uh, some of the other uh, currencies in the world are, are getting weak against the, the dollar, and then because of that, then the Fed doesn't need to do uh, hikes as, as extreme as it probably will. And if, if there's anything that I've learned, you know, for as long as I've known you both, but especially over the last couple of years in the, in the pandemic is that you read a lot of stuff on the news and a lot of that stuff's based on whatever somebody else is. It's based on somebody else's math for one, but uh, trusting your own instinct and trusting what you're seeing and, and you're, feeling with your own spend in your own wallet is, is probably a good proxy for what what's actually happening in the world and i i i just don't see how you know uh, we aren't in if the definition of recession is back to back or, or consecutive quarters of, of shrinkage then then i think we're in it because if they're saying that the u.s economy is is going to grow again in q2 because of consumer spending I was telling you guys earlier, but I just I think consumer spending is is on a knife's edge. If you consider prices and inflation, look at your own kind of spending habits. I like I know exactly where I've pulled back, uh, and and that's not a function of not being able to afford things. Like I'm I'm in a very privileged position, but I just choose not to spend on things that I used to spend on because things are getting more expensive. And and I feel like I'm a pretty standard proxy for for most people, and so I I just don't see it. I don't see it. If I read Twitter long enough, I want to jump off a bridge. I think you need to follow some different accounts. You know, I actually, I don't actually follow anybody. I just, I go in, I just type in words I'm interested in to see what people are saying. Yeah. And uh, my, why things always sound so different, Kane, is there's, it's like dealing with every, you know, 22 year old that comes out of college and they're only can regurgitate the things their professor told them. It's, there's, like viewpoints based on what someone else told you. And then there's the viewpoints that you've actually lived. And I usually say, you know, the, my experiences on what I lived is far greater when, than whatever someone is telling me. And back to when they said this was transitory, I think you and I are probably on a, on a video somewhere in August saying this isn't going to be transitory. Right. Are you an economist, Kane? No. Yeah. I barely went to elementary school. So, at the end of the day, between the two of us, we still got it more right than supposedly the smartest people that are running our, you know, run the money in this country. Because if you just go based on what you've lived and experienced, it usually trumps whatever the hell the news, and especially what Twitter's saying. They're they're all narrative. I don't care about the narrative. I care about reality. We we said that this was going to happen. We said the rate hikes were going to happen. We said inflation was going to get worse. In fact, Kane, I think everything we talked about between August and October has come true. Mm -hmm. Because that's based on living. I don't need to... If you live something, there's people out there right now look you in the face and say, that's not true. It's like, no, I, I lived through it. <laughs> like, what do you... Like, I'm sorry you read about it in a book. I lived through it. And that's I think that's where we're at right now, where we put way too much weight on what someone else tells us. I know from experience that this is probably how the story goes. It's not always right, but so far we've been pretty right. Yeah. So, um, they said it was all going to the supply chain issues and all this stuff's going to start getting cleared up in March and April. How's that feel right now? Yeah, no, no hope. Yeah, it's no hope because I'm on YouTube 
finding noodle recipes. I gotta make homemade noodles. <laughs> The big one for me was was sorry, Dennis. Go ahead. I'll, I'll take I was just going to say, like at every level, no matter what your income is, the way things are going, you're always questioning what you're going to purchase. And you know, for me, it's like you know, I was considering an international trip this summer, and you look at pricing to get over to Europe, and it's like, yeah, <laughs> is it worth spending that much money just to get to Europe right now? Um, you know, spending thousands of dollars where normally it'd be half of the cost. Um, and now I'm like, I think a trip in somewhere in the, domestically is going to be a little bit better. You're looking at water parks, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It lo- looks like Niagara Falls might be <laughs> a good weekend trip. That's actually a really good, <laughs> a really good trip up there. I, I drove yeah. up there to catch Phantom. Um, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. There's a theater called the Pantages, probably screwing that all the way up. But just before they tore down the original place where the where Phantom was done, I went up there. And that was a touristy, but that was a good trip. But I mean, you October, November, you're probably thinking, you know, go to go to Greece, the Med, the beach, and the ocean, and now you're like I wonder what that Great Wolf Lodge is like. <laughs> exactly. Like, how do you deal with that transition? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but seriously, yeah. you know, tickets go from, you know, if you're a family of five, which I am, um, you know, you're accustomed to tickets being anywhere from like a thousand bucks to like eleven hundred, twelve hundred, maybe. Now they're like eighteen, nineteen hundred bucks. And you're like, uh, between that and new passports. And you're like, man, I'm like eight, nine thousand dollars in before I even get on the plane. Can you transfer American Express points? You can can I just send you a half a million points? <laughs> I got so many points. I don't, I got, oh, I'm man. sure I could spend them. You ought to go to Greece. I, just, <laughs> I ain't doing another one of them anyway. I ain't my, saying no. So you know, Tell me how to afford them. Over, I, got, I got millions of those things. And it's like, hey, you can spend them, but it's like, yeah, let's, hey, man, this is what it takes to keep you out of Great Wealth Lodge. <laughs> I ain't going to Great Wolf Lodge. I'd rather just put the sprinkler systems in the backyard. <laughs> oh, man. I just, you know, it's funny. You know, can you talk about kind of the, what's on the news versus reality? Dennis, like you sit down with the guys that are worth, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million. Does, you're sitting down, you're eating dinner, you're sawing out a ribeye. Does that conversation ever seem to match what you're hearing on the news and Twitter? No. The the reality versus what is kind of like told to us is so different. And I think that's why most of the people that I've been talking to in the last six months already knew all this stuff was coming. Do you think whoever BlackRock was out buying up all those homes because they didn't know? It's the, the, the people that, you know, they know. It's just not what you see on Twitter and, and the news, for example. Has your grocery bill went down? No, <laughs> that's for sure. I know that for sure. I, the way I know best is my I, I pay for all my dad's groceries. I know exactly how much his gro he gets the same Gordon's fish sticks, Bob Evans he gets the same stuff every week. The bills always was the same until it just started to becoming thirty percent more, and it hasn't changed. So it's like, well, well, that's not coming back down. So we're going into May. Rates are going up. We got issues with the war now, fertilizer, food, oil, like more shortages. This ain't going away anytime soon. So how does Q2 get fixed, King? Oh, if, if I knew that, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'd be talking to us. <laughs> yeah, screw you, screw you. Guys. If, I, if I had that, if I, I'd have my own show on CNBC right now. If I had that answer. You, you minions? <laughs> You know, going back, going back to like the rate hikes, um, I just, it's crazy that if you think about it, I mean, for obvious reasons, as your credit score is lower, you know, the, the rate that goes higher and it's like, man, the people that actually need a lower rate, um, are not going to get the lower rate because their credit score is bad. 
Um, it just parts of that seem backwards to me, and it's just going to make it more difficult for anyone to to purchase anything. Um, I don't know. I, I don't see this ending anytime soon. Look, as as rates go up and economic issues hit, people credit there's credit scores go down. Your credit score goes down. That rate goes up even higher. Yeah, it's crazy. Which means purchasing a vehicle or a home gets harder. This is how the economy starts to see these now. People are used to getting homes at 2.83%, and now they're five something. Now they're going to be six something. Your purchasing power is greatly d- diminished by every point that goes up. Yep. What do you think a car loan looks like? Now, cars are expensive. And now you, you, you people are getting 72, 84 month loans, and they're going to be at what, 7, 8%? And it's like, I'm not buying a new car now. They're going to start yeah, just, buying used cars. It's just a quick calculator um, online right now. If your credit score is anywhere between 760 and 779 on a 30 year fix, your rate is 5.4. If you go down to like 680, it goes up to 6.2. Yeah. And that's why they're seeing there's now we're at a 10 year high on adjustable rate mortgages. They've not been this high. I don't know how to even say it. More people since you know 2009 are now seeking arms because of the rates, which it tells me they're also well, probably overextending themselves, still trying to buy as much house as possible right now. Then that's why you got a calculator up. Do a three hundred thousand dollar house payment okay. at at three percent. Okay, and he's really looking at cars right now. <laughs> at a three percent rate yeah three percent rate three three hundred thousand three percent 30 years let's go uh, uh nothing down he's typing one key at a time <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it won't let me change the rate. It wouldn't even let me go to 3%. Oh. It's like, this is not type, realistic. Yeah, type, type in loan calculator <laughs> somewhere. I did. It's that. Uh, there we go. It's probably wondering, like, where are you getting your, your rates from? It's uh, 1265. I'll change that to 6.5. 1896. So yeah. 500 bucks. This is yeah. the hell we're in for. And, you know, for the last <laughs> decade plus or how long, two decades, we were so used to low rates. Well, you're like, this is going to make your payment go up 50%. And, you know, the people in the top, you know, 10, 15% of earners, this isn't going to hurt them as much. Everyone else is it's gonna suck for car loans. Uh, how many people got credit card debt up there and now they're it's gonna go up three, four, five percent? This doesn't end well. No. Because I've seen this story before. Um or you know, what's the government do? Print more money? How do you print more money when inflation's already this bad? Kane, what's the way out of this? Yeah, I, I I don't know. And I, as you guys say that, I, I read this line that's under this photo. Um, inflation cutting into household purchasing power. Businesses are boosting wages, consumers uh, supporting consumers. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't. You know, you're going to hang up on this you know, Zoom. You're probably going to look up Bitcoin price. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, I mean, speaking of that, the, uh, I, you know, my little hobby is that I like to look at watches sometimes and I like to see the prices of watches as a proxy for supply and demand. And and you can see things coming down slightly, which obviously means people aren't buying them as much. And so we're in a different place than we were, you know, unbelievable stimulus times 12 months ago where everybody had like crazy amounts of money. And I, I, everything that I'm seeing, and then we go back to that initial point, which is trust your instincts, trust what you're seeing. Doesn't look like, Oh, this is a a, a blip, and we're going to be back to growth. I, I, yeah, I mean, I've already said it, but I just don't see it. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people. It's going to look like that 1920 photos with the the dude that's got his pockets pulled out and his hands are like up, like I'm broke. 
because what the two years of COVID was was like hitting the lottery, and then how many of the lottery people end up going broke? <laughs> like, yeah, you got the lifestyle creep. You're used to spending all that money. You don't want to go backwards, and people will just run that right into a brick wall. So at some point, do you see fraud going up to try to maintain the lifestyle? Which I think you're already seeing some of that stuff going on. More bankruptcies. I mean, there's a lot of stuff, you know, more foreclosures, credit card defaults. When you start seeing more of that stuff, then I think, okay, we're, we're about to get into a real mess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I got, I got nothing else other than who knows. <laughs> so <laughs> make yeah. smart decisions. Hey, you know, because the news this morning is like shocking. You no, know, U.S. economy shrinking for like, who thought of rates are going up? We got a war going on. Gas prices are crazy high, so people stopped eating out and uh, going. Like a lot of things slowed down during the war. Um, you can't, they have people have no inventory. They don't have the commodities to manufacture things. Where is the brain trust that is like that predicted this was going to go up? Once again, the, the smartest people in the room don't seem to know much. And if they can't get it right, how are they going to get us out of this mess? It will get our, we'll get ourselves out of this mess at some point. But it's not going to be from these guys in the around the big boardroom table in, in the oak covered room. They they know how to get us in the mess. We somehow work our way out of it. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. I hope you're right. Try to stay positive, Kane. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh you know, I really appreciate the sectors that we serve today <laughs> on the executive search side being in manufacturing and supply chain, because I just, no matter what's going to happen, positive or negative, um, those areas are going to be needed. So, I mean, we're so dependent on everybody and everything else at this point. <laughs> you have to. You know, we can't do nothing for ourselves anymore. You know, we got to send our chickens to China to get clean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crazy times. All right. That's all I got. I'll catch you guys. <laughs>